On Friday 14th February 1902, at around 10 o'clock in the morning, a huge explosion rocked the Balmossy Quarry, just north of Broughty Ferry, killing two men and injuring one other, with a lucky escape for a fourth man. The explosion had been caused by a quantity of gelignite cartridges that had been put into the cavity to blast away a large quantity of rock. The quarry was situated on the high ground immediately north of Balmossy Farm and was owned by the Broughty Ferry Police Commissioners, with the rock used in the metalling of roads. The disaster took place at the extreme northeast of the quarry, killing 35-year-old John Oruk of Fort Hill Fuse, the foreman quarrier, and John Robertson, a quarrier who lived in Dundash Street in Broughty Ferry. The injured man was Benjamin Sturrock of King Street in the ferry, who was also a quarrier. The operations at the quarry had been ongoing for a number of days in order to open a new ledge of rock. The rock was some 30 or 40 feet from the bottom of the quarry and had been covered in a layer of six or so feet of dirt. This had been cleared away, exposing around 15 feet of the surface. Drilling operations had taken place to ready it for the blast, which was to take place at 11 o'clock that morning. Between 9 and 10, Oruk, Robertson, Sturrock and another quarryman, John MacDonald, had been working on the ledge and had been placing the gelignite cartridges into the holes, which had been pre-drilled. Three holes, six to seven feet deep, had been prepared and two had been loaded with cartridges. It was while the men were working at the third hole that disaster struck. They had just completed some remedial work and were about to load the third cartridge when the explosion occurred. There was nothing they could do. Huge pieces of rock and a thick cloud of dust and sand filled the air. Boulders and chunks of stone fell into the quarry. Once the dust had settled, Sturrock and MacDonald realised the magnitude of the incident. To their left, they saw the body of their workmate, Robertson, around 15 feet from where he'd been standing before the blast. Oruk was nowhere to be seen. Other workmen, who'd been working at the far end of the quarry, were startled by the explosion, then rushed to help their colleagues. They found Robertson lying with terrible injuries to his head and body, but on closer examination found he was still breathing, albeit just. They carefully carried him down to the tool shed at the entrance of the quarry. By this time, medical assistance had been called for and it was hoped it would arrive in time to save his life. But he died soon after being laid out in the shed. Meanwhile, a search got underway to look for Oruk. He was found lifeless in a clump of whin bushes, 20 feet away from the disaster. His injuries were worse than Robertson's. His face was gashed, his body badly bruised, and both legs were broken. He had been thrown over a seven feet high sand hill such was the force of the explosion. His watch had stopped at 10 to 10, the exact time of the incident. A number of officials from Broughty Ferry were soon on the scene. These included Dr Sturrock, the borough surveyor Douglas Winning and Sergeant Brown of the local police. The doctor attended to Sturrock who had been moved to Balmossy Farmhouse. He had been hit in the head with a large boulder which had left a gaping wound and was suffering from shock. He was later taken home to Broughty Ferry in a cab. The ministers, James Leask and James Wilson, 
had the unenviable task of informing the relatives of the dead men. Oruk's father, David, who was a contractor at the quarry, was on his way to watch the blast when he met Winning on the road, who broke the news to him about his eldest son. Oruk had been married with a family of five, but Robertson was a widower with a grown-up family. This was the first accident to happen in the quarry. John MacDonald later spoke of his marvellous escape. Large quantities of stone and earth engulfed him, but the only injury he sustained was a slight scratch on his neck. Benjamin Sturrock's escape was nothing short of miraculous. At the time of the blast, he was working alongside Oruk and Robertson, preparing the charges. Oruk had been on one side of Sturrock, while Robertson was a little further away on the other side. At the time of the explosion, a dislodged rock was swept past him. Oruk and Robertson were swept away, while he was hit on the right side of his head by the showering rock, and he sustained a deep cut on his forehead. His eyes were also affected, and like John MacDonald, he suffered from shock. Brotty Ferry was stunned by the events at the quarry, and many were overcome with grief. They rallied round the families affected by the incident. The injured men went on to make a full recovery. On Monday 17th February, John Oruk and John Robertson were interred at the Barnhill Cemetery, with Oruk's funeral taking place first. Several town councillors and well-known residents attended the interments, with Reverend Leask overseeing Oruk's burial and the Reverend Wilson overseeing Robertson's. The funerals were paid for by the town council. In July 1902, Daniel and Alexander Robertson, sons of John, won a case against the town council under the Workmen's Compensation Act as they were wholly dependent on their father. They were seeking £100 in compensation, but in the end, the sheriff in Dundee, Campbell Smith, awarded them £55 in total, but said the town clerk, Edward Cowan, had acted fairly and honestly when he had offered to pay funeral expenses and had deposited £25 into 19-year-old Daniel's bank account. The judge took this payment into consideration when calculating the compensation. <laughs>